Hello and welcome everyone to my Life in the Universe pandemic series. So this is just a set of short talks about things to do with life in the universe, the origin of life, evolution of life on Earth, life elsewhere, that I thought were interesting and I hope you will find interesting uh, as well. So today I want to talk about a slightly more practical thing than a particular scientific question, which is how do we collect a sample on another planet or on the moon and do it in the right way? Now, of course, we all want to collect samples from different planetary bodies like the moon or Mars because we want to study them. And if you think about it, it doesn't seem a very complicated problem, right? You go to the moon, you get your sampling bag. Hopefully you're not using an old Sainsbury's bag like this, but this is a pandemic. So use your imagination. This is a special European Space Agency NASA sampling bag. I go to the moon. I find my interesting sample. So today's star of the show is going to be my pet rock here. Pick up my sample. I put it in the bag, I close up the bag, and I go back to the Earth or back to my planetary station with my sample. How difficult can that be? But there's a problem because some of these samples might contain valuable information beyond merely their geological use. So, of course, if I have a rock like this, it contains lots of minerals and geological information, and that geological information is not going to be affected by how I happen to handle it, by the way in which I manipulate it like I'm doing here. But if I want to get other information, like organic information, for example, out of this rock, say I'm on the moon and I'm collecting a rock that's got some ancient ice in it, and that ice might tell me something about the early water on Earth, or perhaps it's got organic material in that might tell me something about the early carbon-containing compounds that were delivered to the early Earth in comets or asteroids, in other words, the building blocks of life. And I'm using a lunar sample to understand those early organic materials to tell me something about how life might have originated on the Earth. Then I don't want to contaminate that rock with organic material. And you can see right here, as I'm handling this rock, I'm transferring organic material from my fingers to the rock. We are covered in microbes. Your body is covered in microbes. There are, in fact, as many microbes on and inside you as there are human cells. But because they're so small, you can't see them, of course, but you're basically half human, half microbe. And everywhere where you go, you're shedding microorganisms. You can't see them, but they're shedding everywhere. And when I'm touching this rock, I'm transferring microbes from my fingers onto the rock. The same is true with samples on Mars. I might be collecting a sample to study uh, ancient or to search for ancient life. I might be looking for the lipids, the remnants of ancient Martian microbes, if they were ever there. I might want to explore that rock for that evidence. I might even be looking for extant life on Mars. Maybe the sample that I found, I even think could have Martian microbes in, who knows? But whatever I do, I don't want to cover it with Earth microbes because I don't want to spend billions of dollars getting to the moon or Mars, collecting my sample, bringing it back to the Earth or studying it in my lunar laboratory only to find that there is life in it, but it's my life and it's life that came from my hands. So the challenge is how to get this rock into this bag without contaminating it, to maintain it pristine in pristine state for biological chemical analysis. And the way in which we do that is generally re referred to as aseptic technique, aseptic technique. And what aseptic technique is, just a it's just a method of trying to break the chain of contact between the human being doing the sampling, me in this case, and the sample I'm interested in. So there are various protocols we use to break that chain, to minimize the chances of contamination. And the idea of aseptic technique is simply to minimize the probability of contamination. It's very difficult to eliminate it completely, but we can do a lot to try and reduce the chances that I will ruin my sample by covering it in inorganic material. The first obvious step is that I could cover my hand with gloves. And this is something that we frequently do in field sites on the earth, we put our gloves on, uh, again, please use your imagination. These are kitchen gloves. We're in the middle of a pandemic here, but these could be uh, laboratory gloves or any other type of gloves. Now, you can immediately see this is quite complicated. I mean, when I say it's complicated, it's easy for me to do. But imagine you're in a spacesuit on the moon. Uh, it's not easy to put on an additional layer of gloves. So there are, in fact, some technical questions that spacesuit designers have to address. Not something we need to think about here, but it is the fact that when you're on the moon or Mars in a cumbersome spacesuit, these sorts of things I'm about to show you are not necessarily very easy. So now I have some gloves on, and those gloves 
are going to reduce the chances of me shedding microbes from my fingers that are now covered onto my sample. But we have to be a bit careful here because the microbes themselves could be on the gloves. Now, if they come out of a sterile packet and I've put them on my hands, the chances are that they remain sterile. But who knows? Maybe I accidentally touch my suit or I accidentally touch something that was contaminated. So on the earth, at least, what we tend to do is even when we've got our sterile gloves on, we tend to cover them in alcohol like this. Now, again, this is not going to be very easy to do on the moon. So I've got some alcohol and I'm going to clean my gloves. And by now, hopefully, all of you should be familiar with this from your pandemic hand washing. I'm going to clean my hands like this, and like this, like this, all this good stuff that I'm sure you're doing on a regular basis to stop yourself getting coronavirus. And now I've got clean hands. Now, of course, on the moon or Mars, taking bottles of alcohol like this and walking around and covering your spacesuit hands with alcohol may not be practical. And again, here's a technical challenge for spacesuit designers to figure out how spacesuit gloves or gloves that you put over your spacesuit gloves can remain sterile. It's an interesting problem. But for now, at least, we just focus on what we would do on the Earth. We've cleaned our gloves and now they're sterile. They've been alcohol sterilized. Now I can pick up my sample and I can put it in my bag. Now, here's another thing. We don't want to put our hands inside the bag because although we've taken great pains to make sure that our glove here is sterile, we still are increasing the chances of contamination going into the bag when we put our hands in. It could be there's a microbe there, for instance, it's now in the bag. So aseptic technique is all about trying to minimize contact between surfaces, even if we think that they've been well sterilized like our glove. So we're going to drop the sample into the bag without touching the inside like this. Now the other thing we want to do is to open the bag beforehand. And this is also something we try and do without putting our hands in. It's no good opening your bag ready to collect your sample before you put your gloves in and opening it up like this with your bare hands because now you've filled it with microbes. So you can open up the bag at any time, but it's best to do it when you've got gloves on because you're minimizing chances of things shedding into the bag and you're trying to open the bag from the outside like this and not put your hands inside and then dropping your sample in to the bag. And once it's in there, we can now uh, close the bag and take it off to the lunar laboratory or the Earth. Now, of course, not all samples come in nice, convenient, small sizes like this that I can pick up off the ground and put in the bag. So sometimes these samples will be attached to a giant outcrop on the moon or Mars, and I need to break that rock off the outcrop. And of course, to do that, we have a rock hammer like this. Now, you might think to yourself, OK, what's so difficult about that? I go up to the outcrop, break my rock off, I put it in the bag just like you showed me, and that should be pretty easy. But think about it for a moment. The rock hammer itself is potentially contaminated. This rock hammer I may have been handling earlier on. It may have been sitting on the kitchen table in the lunar habitat where someone has left some food. It may have been picked up with someone's bare hands and put in the sack to go out onto the lunar surface. We don't know what the state of that is. So we need to decontaminate this. And on the Earth, we would do exactly the same as our gloves. We would pour some alcohol on there. And often what we would also do is once we poured alcohol in there, we would light the end of it. And this would flame the end and kill off the microbes. And the flaming process gets rid of the ethanol, the excess ethanol, and helps to sterilize it by heating it up. Of course, on the moon, there's no oxygen, and nor is there on Mars, so you can't start lighting the end of things to flame them. Uh, that's a forthcoming challenge to think about how we can decontaminate rock hammers on the moon or Mars. Maybe we have a pouch on the side of our spacesuit that heats up the rock hammer to several hundred degrees and sterilizes it before we take it out to collect our sample. But that's a, a, a thing for engineers to worry about. On the Earth, what we do is we put ethanol at the end of there and we might light it. We don't have to if we're out in the field and it's very windy. Maybe we don't have the luxury of trying to light it just because it's extremely difficult to do with all the wind uh, blowing over the rock hammer. But at the minimum, we can add uh, ethanol to the end of that to try and kill off any vegetative microbes. Now we have a rock hammer that's sterile at the end and we can use it to break our sample in two and collect our sample in the way in which I showed you earlier. Now, all of these methods are quite idiosyncratic depending upon the individual. You might be left-handed, you might be right-handed, you might have particular ways of holding a rock hammer. The whole point about aseptic technique is there is no right way of doing it. There's no 
rigid protocol for collecting samples aseptically. The idea of aseptic technique is a way of thinking. It's about trying to minimize transfer of microbes, trying to minimize contact with contaminated surfaces. And when you're thinking in an aseptic way, what you're constantly thinking to yourself is, what am I doing? How am I minimizing contamination? How am I gonna get that into a bag without contaminating it? And you can modify and adapt these methods and do it in the way in which you feel comfortable, but you have to uh, maintain this aseptic disconnection between your hands and the sample to ensure that you minimize the contamination of the sample. So those are just some ideas of aseptic technique. Uh, this is the way in which you or an astronaut or anyone else who happens to be on another planet in the distant future and who wants to collect samples for scientific analysis should go about collecting samples. It also shows you how things that you're learning in the pandemic about how to keep your hands clean are exactly the same ideas. Um, when you wash your hands after you've collected some groceries, you're engaging in aseptic technique. You're trying to prevent the coronavirus, if it's on your groceries, from ending up inside you. You're trying to break the chain of transmission. So aseptic technique is something we all now have plenty of experience in, and this is the way in which we will collect samples on the Moon or Mars in future planetary exploration. Take care of yourselves. Thank you for joining me.